This is a video if your spouse especially is always asking you to rub their shoulders. My name is Dr. Jeffrey Hanna and I'm from Clear Chiropractic in Spokane, Washington. And it's a very, very common thing where we get tightness in and through our shoulders. And what we oftentimes will do, especially if we are married or in any kind of relationship, is we're going to be constantly asking our spouse if they would, you know, rub our back, rub our shoulders. I'm no different in this regard either. The thing about it is it's not necessarily a shoulder problem. It's oftentimes a neck problem in disguise. And what I want to do is I want to explain in this little video exactly how and why that is the case. And we're going to say, simply put, it starts with your posture. Posture has very, very little to do with laziness and even work whether we are in front of a computer, whether in front of a laptop, whether we are in front of our phones all day, or whatever it would be. That doesn't create the problem. The problem is pre-existing, and it is simply magnified when we are doing repetitive stressful activities all day, every day. And where that manifests most commonly is when we are jutting our head forward like this. Our head normally weighs about 10 pounds, which is going to be about the same equivalent of a bowling ball. And it sits on top of a little vertebra that weighs about 10 grams. So a disproportionate relationship. The relationship then between your head and your shoulder should be in such a way where your ear sits over the top of the tip of your shoulder right here. Every inch that your head comes forward, double that weight. So it's not very hard for a person to be walking around with a 20, 40, and sometimes even an 80 pound head, depending how much you're, loon, loop, um, you're leaning forward, stooping, slouching, all that sort of stuff in front of your phone more often than not. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna put inordinate amounts of strain on all of the muscles that normally are going to support your head and anchor into your spine at the base of your neck and also onto your shoulders. And there are both direct physical connections and there are also indirect connections that I kind of want to mention here. So one of the, the first ones that I want to mention, starting basically right up at the top, you've got a muscle that it seems a lot of people have actually heard about. It's called the levator scapula muscle. And what it does is it goes from the tip of your C1 vertebra, runs down your neck, and actually attaches into the very tippy-top corner of your shoulder blade. And it works to a certain degree like a normal ballast in order to preserve that relationship. Problem is if you've got a problem in your neck, what it's going to be doing is it's going to be causing that shoulder blade to go off kilter. And see, muscles in your body, every muscle that you have is going to be designed for a certain function. And then when it comes to the deep layers on the back of your neck and then into your shoulder, there are four levels. Your most superficial one is going to be your trap. Most people have heard of that. It's this big, broad one here. The next layer down, these are what are called your erector spinae. These are the primary movers. And then deeper to that are going to be your, uh, they're called the basically the core muscles. Transversal spinalis is the fa fancy technical thing. In fact, I skipped over one between your trap and between your erector spinae, there are a series of muscles which include the levator scapula. These are your secondary stabilizers, so I'll back up a step. So from superficial to deep, you've got the basically the broad postural muscles. You've got the secondary stabilizers. You've got those erector spinae. Those are the primary movers. And then you've got your deep down core muscles. Now here's the caveat is if you've ever had an injury, head injury, whiplash injury, even a tailbone injury, where you take a slip and a fall and it causes a ripple effect through your spine. It's your neck that's the weak link in the chain. This is the spot that's going to be most likely injured. And what it's going to do most commonly is it's going to damage that deepest core stabilization level. And what will characteristically happen then is a person's head is going to start to stoop and drop forward just like this. 
And what we're told, and this is partially true, is we need to work on strengthening our neck muscles. Well, that's fine, provided that the joints are not actually locked up, because if the joints are locked up, this fourth layer, simply put, is not able to do the work that it is normally designed to do. So what's going to happen is that activity is going to be shifted to this layer right here. In other words, the muscles that are designed to do the primary moving are now doing the stabilization. And the ones who were supposed to be doing the primary uh, stabiliz or primary movement, now that they're doing the stabilization and they're not really that good at it, it means that they have to kind of shirk that responsibility to the secondary muscles. But they're not really designed for that either, so they're working overtime. And then that manifests ultimately at your postural muscles. So point being, and what this oftentimes leads to is a phenomenon which is known as upper cross syndrome. It's where you've got these posture imbalances where you see the head is sticking forward, the pec muscles are way too tight, the muscles in the back here are way too weak, and one of the shoulders drops down like this. All of that is the reflection based on the layers of damage that have been going on from deep up to the superficial level. So this is the reason why I say posture is not a matter of being lazy. It's a reflection of the layers of damage and the compensations that have occurred your inner reality. So coming back to your shoulder, if you've got this imbalance that so happens to have affected your upper neck, very characteristically, what it's going to do, it's going to cause a shoulder to drop, basically like I'm showing you right here. And what that's going to do is that's going to change the normal mechanical use properties of how your shoulder muscles are able to work. And what that means is oftentimes going to cause stiffness, soreness of various points in and around that. And it also means that these joints are not going to be moving properly. And to do a very basic demonstration of that, I'm going to slide my chair back just a little bit here so that you can see this. What you do is you take your hands out like this, palm side down. And what you do on purpose, you stick your head way, 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 way too far forwards so that you're basically dealing with the equivalent of a 50-pound head, which is really going to put a lot of stress and strain through all these muscles. If you're having issues, please don't do this. But especially if you are having shoulder issues or this tightness, and we're going to get to that, try this. Take your hands out like this, sticking your head as far forward as you possibly can. Now, back of your hands... Start taking them up towards the ceiling as far as you can. So I'm showing you this is as far as I am able to get when my head is like this. Then keep your arms as they are and bring yourself up to where you are supposed to be. So ear over the tips of your shoulders. Point is, this is easy for me now. So I'll do that again. And try this at home. Don't just take my word for it. Try this. Stick your head as far forward as you can. Take your arms out to the side. Take them up as far as you can in a straight line. It does you no good to cheat by coming forward or by going backwards. Keep them back. Bring them up as far as you can. Then sit up. And then see that you can quite easily get the rest of the way. So I do this as a demonstration to show how head position directly affects the way that the muscles of your shoulders are able to work. So you can appreciate if those muscles are being worn down over a very, very long period of time, that can cause a whole bunch of issues here that can show up in your AC joint. It can show up in the shoulder joint itself. It can show up in your biceps, in your triceps, or in your rotator cuff, any number of different ways. And of course, this is also going to manifest even if you've had a shoulder injury. See, if you've had a shoulder injury and you're working with your physical therapist as part of your rehab protocol, great, awesome. But you got to also make sure that your neck is properly aligned because guess what? If it isn't, your body is healing against the current of the river. And I don't care how strong of a swimmer you are, you're not going to you know, do really well. It's much better if you're able to work with the current. So making sure that that upper neck is aligned so that these muscles are able to heal and repair the way that they are designed is a much better strategy, in my opinion. 
Now there's another part to this here because so far we've been talking more about how your shoulder moves. Why is it that this gets and feels so tight? This oftentimes is the result of a whiplash injury. And whiplash is not just car accident. It's anything where your head got jostled one way or the other way. So yes, a car accident, but a slip on the ice, a fall off a ladder, a trip over the curb, all of these cause your head to reflexively contract and snap one way or another. And if this pushes or puts a sprain strain through the joints in the middle part of your neck, particularly around the C3, the C4, and the C5 area, what that's going to do is that can slowly accumulate over a period of time and produce irritation to the nerves. And guess where those nerves receive the sensory supply? They receive it from the back of the head, the back of your neck, and across your shoulders like this. So a person who says, my shoulders feel sore and achy all the time, what they're describing there is both a muscle overuse, most likely because of that head, head neck imbalance, but they're also very likely describing an issue that's involving in one form or another, their C3, their C4, their C5. In other words, there's something going on there. And that doesn't strike me as coincidence. You see, that's the area of a person's neck that we find is most commonly going to be where degenerative arthritis starts to set in. And arthritis is not simply a matter of a person growing older, because if that was the case, you would see arthritis everywhere in 100% of all people. It's not the case. It's because there was an old physical injury that was never properly addressed. And as a consequence, your body is laying down more bone like rust to try to stabilize the area. Now, you may not be able to undo that rest, but if you can make sure that those joints are moving as well as they possibly can to take the center of gravity of the head, getting it resting the top of the shoulders where it belongs, and then working to do strengthening, stabilizing exercises on top of that, that goes the longest way in terms of protecting your neck preventing future injury, and being able to continue to live and operate life at the highest possible quality of level for years and decades to come, even if you've already got arthritis. So this is a bit of a story in terms of how is it that your neck actually affects your shoulders. And if what you think is actually perhaps a shoulder issue, still can be, but don't forget the neck is a major player into all different varieties of shoulder injuries. And at the very least, is an essential component if you're trying to heal from a shoulder injury and you want to get the kind of results that you desire. So hope you guys have found value in this video. If you have, please always do like and subscribe and share it with your friends and family. That helps this video get found by other people who need to know this information as well. And if you'd like a little bit more information, you're in the Spokane, Washington area, you can check us out at Clear Chiropractic or clearchiropractic.com. And you can also go to my personal website, which is drjeffreyhanna.com, where we've got links to videos, blog articles, all kinds of other information just like this. Hope you've enjoyed. This is Dr. Jeffrey Hanna at Clear Chiropractic. Get well, live well, and stay well. So until next time, take care. Bye-bye now.